think we're live. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Michael Tara, and I'm going to be doing a uh, large uh, form sculpture demo. And uh, I'm going to show you how to make uh, some good tools that will support your work while you're working. And uh, bear with me while I try and get the laptop in a position where I can actually um, see comments and respond to them. I'm going to try and go through uh, the demo and then I'll, I'll, I'll sort of try and pay attention to things as they scroll by, but um, it'll be much easier for me to, uh, to look at your comments and your questions at the end. Hi Shiloh, good to see you. Darren, good to see you. Um, uh, so I'm not, I'm not Mr. Digital. Uh, so let me let me do this, all right? Okay. And uh, my computer is not doing the thing that says I can see my live video yet, so... Oh, there I am. Okay. Cool. Alright. So, we're going to see how technological I am. Alright. So um, a lot of the work that I do for uh, gallery shows and museum stuff and things like that is big. And it's actually getting bigger and bigger. Um, and uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of the tools that I've kind of created to make uh, large, lightweight forms that are easy to move around uh, before the clay is done. So. Um, one of the things that I've discovered is really handy is to create a really large uh, sort of mandrel to work against so that you can push onto it and make sure all of your uh, sections of clay are solid and something that allows you to gain real good height uh, while you're working and something that allows you to actually move things around the studio uh, while you're working on it. So, uh, to make one of these, uh, go ahead and visit your local um, air conditioning, heating duct guy, or Lowe's, and uh, pick up some of this ducting material. Uh, it comes kind of sprung open like this, and uh, you can get them in a bunch of different diameters. So I've got ones that are uh, like six inches, uh, going up to 12 inches. Um, the first thing you'll do, and it's super simple, is decide actually how tall you want it to be. I recommend that you give yourself uh, handles, uh, you know, room to grab stuff uh, above and below. Uh, this size here is an 8 inch size. It's a great all purpose tool if you're going to go big. Um, the way this works and I'm going to hold it up here so that you can see it. It's got uh, this sort of toothy thing on this side that meets with this little grippy side on this side. So all you have to do is take the two sides, you put the, the side without the teeth into the slot, at this point, take a moment to make sure that this is straight across. Because once this locks in, it is done. It's there for life. Okay? So get that sweet. And then when that's sweet, kind of bend it like a little heart, and it'll make a click noise. And that means that it is now yours forever. Okay? So this end is really flat. And... There it is. And it just squishes back and makes a nice round tool. Um, the next part of that puzzle 
is because it's still squishy, um, it's going to be hard to, uh, to make a rigid form or really work on it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take some uh, of the, the one or and a half or two inch thick uh, construction insulation foam. You're going to set this down on top of the foam. You're going to trace a lovely circle and make it so it fits. And you're going to put one at the bottom and you're going to put one in a little bit on the top. And what that does is it makes this absolutely rigid, absolutely super tight. Um, this is a tool that uh, it, it weighs nothing. You know, it's not going to it's not going to strain you as you work with your clay. You're going to take this tool. You're going to when the clay is all the way around it, you can push on the tool and use it like a rolling pin from the inside. It's it's fabulous. And and I you know if you're working with large stuff, you're going to end up with a stack of these in different sizes. And you just you know stick them on top of a shelf or something. Keep them out of your way. It'll be great. Um, the next part of using that tool, however, is um, is clay is like a suction cup, right? So if I put wet clay on this surface, then it'll never come off uh, until it's completely dried and cracked. So the trick that I've learned is to take something that we all have hundreds of, empty clay bags, and go ahead and make a sleeve for this guy. Uh, take one clay bag and cut the end off so you have a hollow tube. Take one guy, completely unchanged, and slide the end of your form into the back. You, we're going to take the, the ears on the top here and we're going to fold them in. And, uh, and I like to use regular old masking tape uh, working uh, on this. It sticks far better and uh, if you use the blue tape, you're going to be disappointed because that quick release blue tape is going to quick release when you don't want it to. So, everybody's all about, I mean, the hardware stores are all about the, the quick release tape and the, the masking tape, the, the regular masking tape just gets cheaper and cheaper. So I'm going to fold these ears in together, a single piece of tape over the top. And then uh, just to make it uh, easier to apply the clay, I'm going to add a couple of tabs and fold in one edge. I hope you can see this. I'll hold it up in just a minute. Fold in one edge like this, so that it, it, uh, it's a snug and smooth fit, okay? Then I'm going to take this hollow one, and we're going to slide it over this one. And then I'm going to add a little bit of tape at the top just to hold it in place. Don't you love that, how it just rolls out of your way? Okay. I think you'd all get a kick about my, uh, my video setup here. It's, it's like twigs and branch parts and rubber bands. Okay. Once again, we're going to make that fold up here just to tighten it up. So 
So the only part of this that's actually secured to our form is the, is the, the little tabs at the very top. Okay. There you go. Now we're ready to go. Um, what I decided not to do is I decided not to show uh, you rolling out clay. We all know how to roll clay out. And uh, we've got 15 different ways to do it. Um, uh, I am using uh, a high roller, which is a vertical slab roller that uh, David Ballar sells. High roller. I totally recommend them. Uh, I use mine uh, all the time, and um, its footprint is really small. And so instead of having a huge amount of my floor space taken up with a slab roller, you know, all day, this uh, high roller is it's this wide, it's on wheels, slides out of the wheel, way the, the wheels lock. It's a terrific, terrific tool. All right, so I've got some clay already rolled out. Um, I, uh, I like to, oh, and it's great because the Studio Cat has already put uh, cat prints all, all over it. Um, I like to start with about uh, a half an inch thick clay. Uh, and it, uh, it's, and this is a, uh, this is something, this is a clay body called Big White. It's a Laguna clay body. Um, it does, uh, it does a good job of, uh, holding together as it shrinks. So, um, I don't know if you can see the, the bottom here. When I was, uh, rolling this out in the, in the, uh, slab roller, I made sure that I kept the orientations similar as I went from thick to thin to thin to thin. So that, uh, as you can see, they're pretty much all the same width. So that's going to make the next part of this easier. Um, we'll take this and We're going to take these three parts. And uh, we're going to start by joining them together. We're going to make a giant slab going this way. Um, to score them, I just use this tool that we all have many of. Uh, as I am scoring, I'm also angling the edge to make a nice slope. So I've got, a, I've got about a 30 degree slant now. It's fully scored. And um, I'm going to add some butter to it or slip. Slide this over, overlap it a little bit. Do the same thing over here. Because these slabs are super fresh, um, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, this clay wanting to separate. It's it all it thinks it's all the same humidity, and it's it can hardly wait to be one again. Okay, we're gonna slide this and overlap it. Okay. 
This part's very exciting. Okay. Um, we all wander in strange places looking for tools. Uh, I was in an antique shop and I found this tool which I believe is a tool that um, people who do things like knitting and darning things use. But this is a fabulous tool for, uh, for spreading out and smoothing and joining that clay. So I just, I just use it like this. And uh, it, it does a terrific job of, you know, eliminating all of that and spreading it out so there isn't like a big little honking ridge in the middle there. I always encourage people to look in all the wrong places to find all the best tools. Okay. So this is going to be the inside of our sculpture. So I'm not terribly concerned about how completely perfect this surface is, but I do like to eliminate any uh, cracks in between the slabs because I believe that uh, with Clay's long memory that uh, if it has an excuse to crack someplace, it will look for something like that. Okay. So at this point, uh, we've got a giant slab. And we're gonna, I'm going to trim the bottom. Because those slabs were basically all the same width, the amount of waste we have is really, really small. And uh, that means that's a lot less wedging we have to do later. And I'm going to do the same thing across the top. So out of a, a 25 pound bag, that's about what we have left. I have, uh, I have two smaller slabs that were from setting up the demo. And we're going to end up with another one in just a minute. But we'll use those. Um, so this clay is, is soft, super mobile. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to roll this clay and join it around our form. So in order to guess how much you need of this, uh, we get to, we get to do some, uh, sort of uh, seat of the pants math. We've got a lovely seam already here. So if we start that seam right at the beginning of our slab and roll it until the seam, whoops, I'm just going to do it on top here. Start it at the beginning and roll that seam until it ends. That's exactly one diameter. We're going to want to have some overlap. So if we go there, we should have plenty of overlap to work with. So I almost hardly needed this extra slab. But we'll save it.
because the studio cat needs some place to stand. Okay. So, here is the fun. Uh, because this is so wide, uh, I'm going to roll it towards us this way with this going out that way because it, otherwise it will hit the wall. So I'm lifting that slab up. I'm going to position the bottom, not exactly on the bottom, but close to the bottom because that will make it easier when we move it to its final resting place. So if you bring it up and then just tighten it so it's nice and smooth here, we can take this moment to score this edge. And uh, give that a little bit of butter. And then you just keep going. And I'm going to keep an eye on this join here, just like that. Okay? So, because we've got a really rigid, solid piece here, we can really lean on that where it overlaps. And you can see this seam right here. Right? You know what occurs to me? I've got more lights in the studio. I'm going to turn them on. Give me a minute. I hope that's better. Um, so we've got the back end of that seam that we can heal at this point. And then where it crosses over, right here, I'm going to basically put that at the very bottom of this, and I'm just going to give it a little roll back and forth, back and forth. So what's going to happen is this is going to get a little bit, the diameter is going to increase a little bit, which is great, because that makes it easy to slide off. And then, I'm going to look at this joint right here, where it's thick, and I'm going to go back and do the same thing. And roll that back and forth and kind of smooth that out. So now, all of my clay is the same thickness. And I'm just going to take a moment and this up. So this, um, I'm just using big white, but I, I have probably nine different clay bodies uh, here in the studio. And um, I've, I've done the same thing with uh, be mixed with grog. Uh, I've done it with uh, any number of uh, the red sculpture body clays. Uh, this technique pretty much works. The difference is going to be in um, uh, how long you let it set up before you unmold it. Um, 
the next step of this is to get a landing spot. Um, I made a whole bunch of these uh, turntables, canvas top turntables. Super easy. I like to put down some uh, newsprint before I transfer them because <coughs> as these big guys shrink, the newsprint will crumple a little bit and shrink with them, but uh, there's the cat. Um, that's Finn. Finn, say hello to everybody. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, one of the things with working with large stuff, when, you, when you're making a small cup, uh, the whole thing doesn't weigh very much. So as the clay shrinks, it can drag itself over a surface with canvas on it, and it doesn't make a difference. But once you start getting some weight to these guys, they'll catch as they try and shrink, and they'll literally tear themselves, themselves apart. So, so this is kind of like giving a little bit of uh, frictionless lubrication that allows them to shrink without cracking apart. So. Um, if you if you tried to make something this big, uh, without um, without this kind of a support, getting it from here to there would be just uh, a challenge. But in this case, we're literally going to grab it through the clay, position it where we want it. How easy was that? Right? I am. Now, um, if you wanted to make this taller, and a lot of my stuff is much taller, um, we would have waited to do that joining part with the rolling, and literally we would just add another long strip of clay to it, and have done, we, we do another wrap. I've done three, four, okay? Uh, super easy to do. When you feel like this is stiff enough, then you can unmold it. All right, and I'm going to show you that process over here. Okay. Here's one I did about two hours ago. All right. And uh, we're going to move from uh, kind of creating the, the structure to, uh, to manipulating it. So because we've got that plastic inside, this metal slides right out. I think that's cool. And then we're going to reach inside and we're going to pull the plastic from the inside. And if we're gentle, there we go. There's our, there's our sleeve right there. And uh, so of course I've got a pile of these already made up and I just slide them on and slide them off. Now, um, we've got this perfect uh, place to start. And uh, you're kind of only limited by the length of your arm or the length of your rice pedal. Uh, by the way, great place to get tools is the Chinese grocery. Rice pedal beautiful form. Look at that, right? You can get these in any length you want. They're about two and a half bucks a piece. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about this foot. So at this point, because we've got half an inch of clay to play with, we can really um, do something interesting with this. I think I'm going to 
I think I'm going to take this form and I think I'm going to make it into sort of a lozenge shaped profile. And, uh, and I, haven't, I haven't done this before, but I thought about doing it, so I might as well embarrass myself in front of all of you uh, while I'm experimenting. I don't know if the camera angle can, can show you this, but because I've got the paper down there, this, this slides in really graciously. It's kind of nice. Okay, so there is a, an interesting jumping off point, and, uh, and I think that what I'd like to do with this is, uh, is create a face. I know you're all shocked at that. Why would Michael do a face? So, um, where are we? Oh, oh, got plenty of time. Okay. Um, so whatever your favorite smoothing tool might be, um, this is a point at which I would uh, just get rid of the, the fabric uh, texture and actually... Uh, if I was going to add a different kind of texture, this is after I smoothed it out, I'd, I'd go ahead and do that. Normally I would let this, um, I'd cover it loosely and let it stand uh, overnight just to get a little, a little bit more uh, resistance to slumping, but heck. And the light bulb right up there went out. Perfect. That's really funny. Okay. So. Let's, uh, let's have some fun.
I think uh, I think that's our nose right there. So I'm just going to hand wedge that up and uh, I'm just going to make a tiny little guy here and form it into kind of a good nosy profile. I think that's way too big. I think I'm going to move this into better light. There you go. Is that better? Okay. So tiny little nosy profile here just like that I'm going to score the back put a little bit of butter on there Pop on a nose. I'm going to think about eyes. Think about eyes from that. If you here's a little sculptor's trick, uh, face sculptor's trick. If you look at the fingernails of your fingers, right? Don't look at them as fingernails. I want you to see them as a pair of eyeballs. Can you see the eyeballs? He's winking at you. Okay? So now, when you're positioning your eyes, can you see how we're now looking at eyes? Here, I'm going to make a... This will make it fun. Okay, so now I've got two eyes, and now you can see where where do I want those eyes to drop? Do I want them here, there? Do I want them closer? I can make them really close. I think it will be fun to put them out about here. But you can see by looking at the back of your fingernail, your finger, it kind of looks like an eye and it gives you a good idea of where those guys should be. So I'm going to support the clay from the inside. Use the back of this tool. Hi, Victoria. Hey! Um, and I'm going to lift some clay up. And in doing that, I'm not only creating the socket that the eye can fit in, but I'm also creating the eye, the, uh, the eyelid. Okay. 
Okay, that's kind of fun. And uh, go ahead and pluck out two eyes from the clay bag. drop a little bit of butter in there and I'm going to hold the eyeball in and I'm going to support it from the back and push out a little bit of uh, cheek right underneath that eyeball. It's just going to create a little bit of shadow that will make great sense when it's all glazed. All right. Next we're going to uh, give him a place to sneeze. We're going to create some nostrils. And I'm just going to take the back end of this tool, again I'm supporting from the inside, and I'm going to poke him in the nose and lift up just a little bit. I hope you can see that. So now we get a really, really get a really authentic looking kind of nose going on there. Um, and uh, I'm going to create a mouth. Um, so. A lot of this is all about, you know, the suggestion of emotion as opposed to uh, creating Bob. So we have a lot of play in how we make our marks and suggest his humanity. So in this case, I'm going to take the profile of this tool which is wider on one end and narrow on the other. And I'm going to let him be some of a wise guy. I think I want to cheat that out a little farther. There we go. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take the round edge of this tool and I'm going to hold it on the front of the sculpture and push from the back to uh, create that bottom lip, to create that shadow line. Okay, so I'm just holding that in place, but I'm pushing from the inside. To create that shadow. He looks pretty sarcastic, that's good. Um, I don't know why, but I think he needs a chin. So, Again, working from the inside out, I'm going to allow the soft central part of my hand to support the clay in the front as I find that place for his chin. 
I'm going to push from the inside and preserve the smoothness of the clay on the front. And just give him the slightest little chin. Yeah, I think that's a thing. Um, where are we? 1245, that's not bad. Okay. Uh, we're going to give him some pupils. And I think he needs ears. So, um, if we go back to our slabs that are uh, extra, and just cut off a little square. I'm going to take a square and round the ends so I end up with something that kind of looks like the profile of a pill. And then I'm just going to cut that in half, right? Pill, two halves. What do you think? Ears? No ears. I think, yeah, ears. I think ears is the deal. Okay, so these will actually just stick like that. And uh, take a moment to get far enough back to decide where you want those ears. I think this ear needs to be up a smidge. There you go. So again, supporting from the inside, working on the outside, I'm going to score that, butter it, Support from the inside and put him right in there. And nice thing about that is it's clearly marked where it goes back. Makes it super easy. So at this point, I would, um, I'd recommend that you don't, don't get too fussy about this joint because uh, all of the things that you would do to make that perfect are going to also make other lines that you may not want to have. So, um, so there you go. So if we were going to continue with this one taller, uh, we could. Uh, to unmold it, again, the plastic stays in, the, the uh, metal slides out. Uh, I'll probably finish that one up later today. Uh, you can play with this edge. I'm going to just kind of nip it off and goodbye. And probably because I just can't help myself, I will probably uh, write a poem and put it on here somewhere. All right.
Okay, so I promised um, time for answering questions, and I know there's a little bit of a gap here. Um, so, uh, do, do we have questions? How can I help? Uh, oh, someone's, uh, so Suzette is actually watching this while she's working on a sculpture. That's fun. And, uh, well, thank you, Janelle. Lovely words. Oh, and <laughs> Daria is voting for eyebrows. Uh, and Joni wants to know when will I put on the bottom. I actually don't think this needs a bottom. Um, it's, uh, there's, unless I'm, unless I'm going to use it as a vessel to contain a thing, I don't really need. Uh, Harriet Heller, do I recycle? Um, I, I always reuse clay. We have very little waste. I keep all of the clay bodies separate. Um, so, <laughs> somebody else wants eyebrows. Uh, bottom question. Okay, I've answered that. Um, can you show a finished product, please? Um, I can. Um, Michael, have you bottomed this? No, no, no. Okay. Um, oh, a link to the metal pieces. Can you show us how, how tall is my kiln? Uh, Suzette, so I've got uh, four kilns. Um, my, uh, my biggest kiln is about five, the interior is five feet tall. And, uh, and the smallest kiln, my test kiln is a, uh, is a 24 by 18. Um, I, as I said at the beginning, I've never done this form before, so I can't show you this finished guy. But I'll, I'll sh I'm going to bring in from the gallery uh, one of the pieces that I, that I, I do in this way. I'll be right back. see this guy? All right, so these pieces actually turn and uh, you can see this was a much larger form um, and uh, these guys you read three different times. Uh, there is the English that wraps around in a spiral and this one says when she breathed her sadness out, I breathed it in. How can doubling a thing have its consequence? But um, the second time you read it is these holes, because the holes aren't decorative, they're actually braille. And it's another poem that wraps in a spiral that's translated in the top uh, edge. And that second poem says, I was not smart enough, or lucky, I, I was, I'm sorry, I was not smart enough, or good enough, or pretty enough, just lucky enough to have met you. But the third time that you read this, you're going to do it with your eyes closed completely, and you're going to trust this thing that you've been wearing since you were born. You're going to, you're going to use your sense of touch, and just by following the contours, of this sculpture, all of these shapes that look relatively random are actually the same shapes that you'll find uh, on the human body. So if you close your eyes, it actually feels like you're touching a sculpture of a, of a human. So, so that's, that's where these sorts of things end up going, uh, or they have so far. Um, okay. Uh, and the, yes, Janelle, the poems are my own. You get to blame me. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so these guys vary in size from, you know, from this big to, to this big. And, um, uh, I, uh, my, 
my next one-man show was scheduled for the beginning of June, but um, that is not on the books anymore. Uh, I'm pushing that back a year. Uh, my, I have another show is scheduled in September. Hopefully that's going to still happen. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Um, <laughs> yes, Deb, I've been married for 33 years uh, and looking forward to the next 33 years. Uh, I don't sell the banding wheels. I, the, the wheels were actually super hard to find. And what they are is a component for making cabinets. So you have to go to a, uh, a cabinet maker supply store. There's a bunch of them online. But what you're looking for... I'm going to go get one that isn't included in anything so you can see what they look like. Give me another minute. So uh, this is what they look like. This is slide one, that's slide two. Um, they're made by a company called Triangle. Uh, I buy them in the case. So I buy a dozen at a time of different sizes. Um, and uh, and I, I, I know you can buy them separately. Um, and you'll probably spend 15 bucks a piece for them, uh, I'm guessing. Uh, terrific. They've got, uh, they've got really good ball bearings. And uh, they're designed to hold up to 1,000 pounds. So, a good thing. Uh, Corey, uh, you could get a Lazy Susan from the dollar store and glue a bat on. But only if you uh, are not doing something that weighs very much. Um, and inexpensive IKEA Lazy Susans, uh, again, are not very good for very much weight. Oh, and you love my shirt. I love my shirt too. Isn't that fun? This is not a drill. Um, and let's see. Oh, uh, Amy says that she's seen these at Lowe's and Home Depot as single things, which would be great. Um, yeah, there you go. Cool. Uh, is there any general clay body that you would not use for this large structure? I would not use um, anything that is like a porcelain. Um, anything that in the final firings may slump with the weight of itself above. Um, when you get big, um, there's some engineering involved in successfully getting your guy out of the kiln and onto the table. Um, if you don't use a body with enough uh, sand and grog in it, um, as it gets into the high fire, it's going to want to relax, and it's going to relax unpredictably. And uh, sometimes uh, you'll get through you know, the first and second firing, and it'll be great. And then uh, you'll get some big fissure that just opens up. And you, it's like, why? Why now? Um, so go ahead and uh, you know, find something, at least with a grog in it. And, uh, but I've, I've used the black clay. I've used, uh, um, my friend Rebecca recommended a, a, a standard uh, brown clay, which worked out perfectly. Um, what temperature do I fire to? Uh, these guys are actually all cone six. And uh, do I mount the Lazy Susan hardware on a round board? Um, for my sculpture, for my working bats, I do. Um, and what I do for these guys is I actually epoxy this right to the bottom of the sculpture. And the reason I don't put it on a Lazy Susan is because I don't want that visual inch and a quarter 
uh, of foot to it. Um, if you if you only have a quarter of an inch of depth, it's like a, it's like making a foot on a thrown pot. It's it's virtually invisible at the bottom, and it, it, the shadow itself hides the uh, the foot. Uh, what kind of firing? Uh, uh, what kind of firing glazing do I generally gravitate to? I I love it all actually, but uh, what I have here in the studio is I have uh, electric kilns, and uh, I play a lot with the glaze composition to make it look like it is a uh, reduction. Um, I'm always uh, dinkling with things to make them more interesting. Um, I tend to use the programmable electrical firing because uh, I I need to walk away. I can't babysit it. I, I need to keep working. Janelle says, uh, do I sell online? I do. Uh, TerracottageCeramics.com. Um, absolutely. Um, and uh, of course I, I do big stuff and then I've got production stuff and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, and Avia said, I wonder what kind of shadows you would get if you put a light inside. Have I ever done that? I had originally thought that I was going to make these so that they would have a light inside because I wanted the part that was hardest to read to be the most illuminating. And my first uh, uh, one-man show was at... Um, Bennett Gallery in Knoxville, and the guy who's the head of the gallery, uh, I talked to him about that, and uh, he told me, don't do it. He said, the minute you do that, um, it is, people are going to think of it as a lamp, and you don't want them to think of it as a lamp. And I, and I thought, oh, okay. And this is the guy who sells big art all the time, so i got to believe him. I know that at least one person who's taken these home has actually suspended a light in the inside from, like, a track light. And uh, they promised to send me that photo, but they haven't yet. Let's see. Oh! And Sharon Hudson has already posted a, a link to get the uh, galvanized steel swivel plate. Cool. Uh, all right. So um, I am now at 1 o'clock. So that's when I'm supposed to be done. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. And, uh, and it has been great to see the other presenters. You guys are terrific. And, uh, and I, I just love being part of the clay community. All right. Take care, everybody.